React hooks are functions that allow you to use state and other React features and functional components. In this video, I'll be explaining the most popular hooks. We'll go over how the hooks work and scenarios where they come in handy. Let's get into it. To start, I've created a React project where I'll be demoing all the hooks and their use case. The link to this code is down in the description below the like button. The first hook we'll be taking a look at is use state. It is arguably the most popular hook and what it does is allow you to track state in a component. State generally refers to data or properties. Let's take a look at how it works. So on the left here, I have a functional component and what I've done is imported the use state from the top. In order to use use state, you have to import it from the top here like this. I've then called use state here. Use state returns two variables. The first is the actual state, right? The variable to keep track of the state. And then the next is the set function. It's a function that you use to update the state, right? So in this example, I've created a button here as well, right? On the left here. And what happens is, when we press the button, this handle click function gets called. And what it does is it calls the, the set function that we got from use state and basically just updates whatever count is plus one. So if we press it, we can see that on the button, it has said, you know, you pressed me count number of times. So the amount of times that we press this is basically the amount of times that count will be stored. Since each time we press the on click, it basically just updates our count variable by one here. Use state can also take in an initial value, which it'll set to the text that we have here. In this example, the initial value here is hello. And what I've done here is I've basically created an input field where once the text changes, we basically use our set text method here that we get from use state to update the value of text, right? So whatever we type into our input field will get updated and set to our text state here that we created. So if I type my name Uma, we can see that we are seeing Uma here, right? So that's basically what use state does. We use it to keep track of state. Use state can take in an initial property, which in this case is zero. That's why our account was zero, but you know, we can, if we leave it empty, it'll be undefined. Quick summary, use state, you call it, it takes in, it returns the state variable and a set method for the variable. And to basically update the state, we basically call the set method and the value of whatever we want the state to be. The next React hook we'll be taking a look at is use effect. Use effect is a React hook that allows us to perform side effects in our component. Some examples of side effects are fetching data, directly updating the DOM, or using timers. Let's take a look at how it works. So on the left here, similar to our use state, in order to use effect, we have to import it on the top here, right? So what I've done here is I've created a state variable count, and then again, use state returns the set count method, which is the method we will use to update the state. I've then called use effect. Use effect takes in two parameters. The first is the effect, which we have here, which in our case is a set timeout function. And then the second variable it takes in is the list of dependencies, right? I'll go over what that is in a little bit. So in this example, so once the component mounts after one second, which is basically what this set timeout function does, it means run whatever is in here after one second, right? Set counts and update our count by one. Take whatever the previous count is and then update it by one. So when we refresh the page, what will happen is it'll refresh, then it'll then update to I've rendered two times. Yeah, so that's basically what use effect does, right? We basically use it to add an effect to our component, right? regarding the list of dependencies that I spoke about earlier, right? So I'm going to uncomment this so that I can explain it. So if we call use the effect like this without passing in the list of dependencies, the effect is going to run every time the component re-renders. And what does re-rendering mean? It means every time there is a state change, the effect is going to run if we don't provide the list of dependencies, right? Next, if we provide an empty list of dependencies, the effect is only going to run on the first render. Finally, we can actually list um, elements here in our dependencies, right? And what would happen is the effect will run the first time and only if the, these variables change, then the effect will run, right? So that's basically what this list of dependencies mean. If we take this list of dependencies out from our use effect, can you guess what's going to happen? We've created an effect, but we haven't passed any dependencies, meaning it's going to run on every render. But why is it running every time, right? We would expect it to only run after the initial render, what's causing the re-render? In React, whenever you update state, right? Whenever you call set count, um, whenever we call a set function from new state, we are updating the state, right? We're basically updating the state of the variable. And whenever we update a state, the whole component is going to re-render, right? It's going to re-render to display our new state, to display that new data. And that's why this is continuously running. So again, if we want it to only run once, we basically add this here. And if we refresh this, it'll run only one time. Another way of using use effect is to fetch API calls, which I have in this example here. 
So what I've done is I've created an effect and basically I have a room ID prop that's being passed in here. And you know, when the page loads, right? When, when the component mounts, this connection is going to be created, right? And this connection will change only if the room ID or the server URL changes, right? So you can essentially just call your API in here. If you want the API call to change in case of any dependencies, then you can do this. That's basically what the use effect does. The next ref hook is use ref. The use ref hook allows you to persist values between renders. It can be used to store mutable values that does not cause re-rendering when updated. It can also be used to access the DOM directly. Let's take a look. So in this example, similar to all the previous React hooks, in order to use them, we have to import them up top here. So we basically call use ref this way, right? You call use ref and use ref takes in an initial property, which it'll set to the current property of the ref, right? So what we're doing in this example is, again, we have a button and on when we click the button, we basically take our current ref and increase it by one, right? So take current ref is equal to current ref plus one. Now, you may be wondering, why are we using use, use ref instead of using use state? Now, use ref, when we update the property of the ref, right, by updating the current property of our ref, it doesn't cause a re-render because it's not a state variable, right? So if you have a variable that you want to update and you don't want the component to re-render whenever that variable gets updated, then you can basically use ref. The other use of use ref, which is the way it's used the most, is to basically access elements in the DOM. So this, this is an example. Here, I've created a, an input ref. I've also, I also have an input field here and I've assigned the ref of the input field to the input ref that I've created. What React will do is it'll set this input ref's um, ref to our input field. We can then access properties of this input field, like the focus method. If we press this, it'll basically focus the cursor in the text, right? That's one of the most popular ways of using use ref. Another way of using it is down here, which I have here in a video player. So in this example, I've done something very similar. I have an explain state, which is a Boolean set to false. I've also created a ref here, right? So in here, I have this video player. And what I've done is I've set the ref of the video player to my ref that I created here. I have this button here to click to play the video. And all it will do is, you know, go into this handle click function. In order to play or pause the actual video, it uses the ref, right? This ref that we set. And then if we press play, it plays the video. And if we press pause, it pauses the video. Now, how is it able to access the video's pause and play elements? Because we set the ref of the video element, right? To the ref that we created here. So what React does is it sets that ref to the element that we assign it to. And then once the video is taken off the DOM, it sets it back to null. That's one of the most popular ways of using use ref. The next React hook is use memo. Use memo returns a memoized value. Memoized. Think of memoization as caching a value so it doesn't have to be recalculated. The use memo hook only runs when one of its dependencies is updated. This can improve performance drastically. Let's take a look. In this our use memo example, what I've done is I've created a count state and assigned it to zero and I also have a to-do state which is an empty list of to-do. Now right here I have this variable called calculation that runs an expensive calculation using our count right for, for an example. And all this expensive calculation is, is basically takes our number and adds this very large number to it and returns the number. So I also have a function here called increment, which basically increments count by one and an add to do, which basically adds to our to do list. Now let's take a look at what will happen, right? If we press the plus to add a new count, you can tell it takes a little bit of time because, you know, we have to loop through all these numbers before we add one, right? Again, it's taking more time because this is a large value and it's, you know, going through it every time, right? Um, because the count is updating. Now, if we add our to-do, you would notice that it's also taking a lot of time. If we press it, it's taking a lot of time to add our new string. If I press it again, it's taking a lot of time, right? So I click it then it updates. Why is that happening? The way React works is whenever you update one variable, right? Whenever you update one state, the whole application re-renders, right? So what's happening is each time we add a new to-do, the state is being updated. This function is being called all over again, right? To fix that, what we do is we wrap our expensive calculation in a use memo function, right? So use memo will take in our expensive calculation and the count, in, right? And so if we refresh this, what will happen is if we add our count, they will still take, it'll still take some time to increase the count because it's an expensive calculation that's using count, right? 
But if we add our to do's, our to do's would add way faster, right? I'm clicking and it's adding Y because this expensive calculation is not running every time the state updates because we've wrapped it in a use memo. It's only running when the count variable, which is a dependency updates, right? So if count runs, then it will then update this, right? But because when we add our to do's, this function here is getting called, right? Add to do's and add to do's is not updating our count. That's why that's not being run. The next hook is use callback. The use memo and use callback hooks are very similar. The main difference is that use memo returns a memorized value. In this case, it was our calculations and use callback returns a memorized function, right? Let's take a look at how it works. Similar to what we had in the past with our use callbacks, right? We basically have the exact same thing right? where we have a count state for the count and we have a to do array. Now, what we've gone ahead and done here is we've basically created another functional component down here, which we call which basically just goes loops through the list of to do's and returns them into our function component. We passed two things, right? We passed our list of to do's and we also passed the function that adds the to do, right? So if I click and inspect this to the right, you can see here. So the to do is a child component of the use callback example, right? But we can see that whenever we update count, in this case, we're only updating um, C the child component re-renders, right? Because we can see whenever we update it, it re-renders. But you may be saying we're only updating the count variables and we're not updating the to-do. So technically, this child component should not re-render. As part of the component re-rendering, when we update count, the to-do function is also changing, right? And so even though this to-do is not changing, since this function is re-rendering, it's, it's creating a new instance of add to-do function every time and it's passing it in here and that's why this is changing, right? So we may be saying, hey, we've wrapped, you know, our component in a memo, which means, which basically is another way of using use memo, meaning only update if, right, only return a new version of the component if these two change, right? But again, it's updating even though add to do is not changing, right? So what we can do to fix this is we basically wrap, you know, we basically wrap our add to do in a use callback, right? and it'll keep giving us the same set to do function but it'll only change it if our actual to-do lists change right so in this case if i save this and i refresh this and i hit plus right now count is updating but the child component is not re-rendering why because we wrapped it in a use callback right that's basically what use callback does we're basically returning a memorized version of this function that way the component doesn't re-render every time, right? That way, this is not changing every time causing this to re-render. If you have multiple nested components, you don't want everything to re-render every time. That's basically what you use callback does. The next hook is use context. React context is the way to manage state globally. It can be used together with the use state hook to share state between deeply nested components more easily than just using use state alone. Let's take a look. Here, I have a bunch of components, right? This is the root components, right? And here I have a state called user and I've set it to my name, Umabu. And what I've done is in this component, I've called component two and I've passed in user as a prop, right? And in component two, all I've simply done is, you know, received the user prop and I've passed it to component three and then done the same thing for component four. And then finally in component five, right? I keep passing it down and then finally in component five, I just print, you know, user. Now. The reality is component two, three, and four did not need this name prop, right? But we're basically passing it from one component to another, to the third, to the next one, right? And to use use context, the first thing we do is, you know, import create context and use context, right? So we create a context called the user context up here. We then wrap our root components in the user context um, dot provider, and we provide the value, which is user in this case to this user context that we created here then all the way down in whatever component that we want to use that value in a use context we basically use the use context and we basically you know we're basically saying use this context that we created here if it was in a different file what we would do is we would import it and then from here we can simply use the user context that we have here right so from here we can simply use this user context that we have here so if I remove this, right, meaning the user that we're using is from our user context and we wrap it, right? And you would see it'll be the exact same thing, right? So essentially what we've done is we've created a user context, right? Using create context and we've assigned the user context value to our user here. 
then whatever component wants to use this value, right? Simply just create a context from the context that we created, and then they have access to this value. And that's basically what use context dot, right? So we can assign this value to a JSON object that we want to pass to like sub components, for example. That's basically how use context helps. The last React hook is use reducer. Use reducer is a hook similar to use state and allows you to use custom logic to update the state. Let's take a look at how it works. So like all the other hooks, to use the use reducer hook, we'll have to import it here, right? The next thing I have in this component is a list of initial to do, right? It's basically an array of objects that just have, you know, an ID, a title, and a complete Boolean set to true or false, right? That's basically what's shown here on the right, right? So if we click it, we want to change this complete to true. If we click it, that way it stays off as check. Here we have a reducer, right? This is, we basically use the reducer with the use reducer hook, right? The reducer takes in two things. The first thing it takes in is the state. And then the next thing it takes in is an action. It then goes through and based on the action type, it performs some logic to return a new state, right? The reducer always returns a new state which with updated data based on this action. So in this case, what we're saying is if the action type is complete, go through our state, which is the previous state that we pass in here. If what we clicked on is the ID, then set the complete value to not whatever it was. So if it was true, set it to false. If it was false, set it to true. Otherwise, don't do anything to it. And then when we get to the one that we clicked on, it'll basically just loop through all of them and then only set the one that we updated to the actual value. And then from there, it'll just return state, right? And if it's nothing, right? If the action type doesn't match, just return the state. So down here, this is how we use. We call a use reducer and use reducer returns like the initial state and a dispatch function. The dispatch function, kind of think of it like as the sets function, right? If we're using use state, then the use reducer takes in a reducer, right? Which is our logic to update the state, right? And the initial to do, which is our initial data here, right? So what would happen here is from our initial data, right? Which is this here, it will map out each one of these um, and then basically return a div with like an input checkbox that is mapped to whether the to do is complete or not. When we click on this to do, we basically call this function here that dispatches an action, right? And the action is of type complete. And the ID we want to update is for whatever we click, right? So the ID we're sending is the one that we click. So what would happen is it'll then come in here and say, okay, it's of type complete. And it'll look through to do that ID that we pass in here, that we pass into the action, right? It'll update it. And that's basically what use reducer does, right? So essentially, if we have like multiple logic, right? So we could add logic to add a new to do, we could add logic to remove a to do, we could add logic to do stuff. It's a lot easier to just wrap it nicely in a reducer and then dispatch actions that we want to do based on the complete action. That's basically what use reducer does. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed these videos and other programming videos, then consider subscribing. All the code for this project is on my GitHub repository linked below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.